All right, guys, how's it going? This is Wild Boy Seven Eight Nine Seven Eight Nine. This is my next video. Um, you want to wash these guys down with soap and water and dry them off. I already did it to this guy all over. Uh, there can be a, a loosening powder that they put on the plastic to loosen it from the molds, and if you paint over it, the paint will not stick so well to your miniature. So. Uh, when I do my next project, I'm going to go ahead and wash the entire sprues, all of them at once. And then uh, we're going to use this Krylon Color Max Primer Ultra Flat. Works on metal, wood, and more. The more I looked on the back, somewhere it says plastic. Somewhere in there. So, yeah, we're going to be good. You want to hold that at like a foot, and you want to spray it over a nice burst you want to spray it on top then you want to spray it at like bottom level trying to get its feet you're gonna of course turn it on like three different angles then you're gonna turn it up to get the uh the edges underneath and yeah i'll be back when this guy's all primed and ready for painting cool cool got this guy all primed up looks like i got most of it a pretty even coat with the spray it's the first time i've spray primered I was thinking maybe in the back under there by his feet I might have missed a little bit, but that's going to be hard to paint either way, although I'll try. So he's got like a little bit of fur here, a majority of cloth, a lot of metal, the crown, the armor, the shield, the sword, his, uh, well, I want to call it a kilt, not so much a dress, that chain mail down there, the keys, um, and then uh, skulls and stuff by his feet. So... I'm thinking white for the bone. I'm not really going to shade it or anything. I want it to be like a nice, clean white. I want it to look magical. I'm going to make this guy a dead Bretonian. They killed my favorite army. So uh, the cloth is going to be red and blue with some blue and red shader over here in case I need it. And the red can be used for a lot of... Well, both of them can be used for a lot of shading. Um, for the metal, I have silver. For things like his armor and his sword and uh, the chain mail and probably the shield. And I have gold, I can trim stuff like the shield, I can do the crown in gold, I can do the keys on his belt in gold, maybe a part of the sword handle or something. And uh, then I got, I got this brown here for... Uh, you know, the fur on his shoulders and stuff like that. And I think that ought to cover it pretty good. I'm going to do the blue and red checker pattern on his his cape there. And take into account the, the torn, uh, tattered part. Needs to be elongated. So, yeah. I, I think he's going to come out pretty cool. Um, I've decided to paint the metal armor. The gold and the silver first. I think that's a majority of the, the painting. And then go to the bone color. And then go to the uh, cloth color. And do the brown last. But uh, we're going to check them out after I get the metal painted, the armor painted. That stone there by his foot also is, I mean, just do it in gray, like a tombstone. Celestria, great. There it goes into focus. Right on. We're back with the White King. I used the Mornfame Brown to paint his belt, his sword holster, and the strap on his shield you can see there. And the Lead Belcher to get his shield, his armor, his sword, and the sides of his helmet underneath his crown. All right, we got the bone painted. Uh, his face looks really blurred out here, but I assure you in actual lighting, it looks really good. I got the gold on the keys. You can see I got the skull color on the sword. Uh, he's really coming together. You can't really see it on the ground. It looks like a white rock, but uh, it's there in all its detail. I still have to paint the cloth, the fur, his little potion on his belt there, and the ground details. But yeah, he's gonna come out really nice.
There was a little brown strap I missed earlier. I touched up the leather and I touched up the gold on the crown. Just wanted to update on that. We got the base all brown. I used two coats. The gray on the rocks. Uh, it's a little bit on the cape, but it's pretty cleaned up on the ground. Down there is a rock underneath. I need to clean up that spot with the brown, just a dab. And uh, there's still some black cloth under the chain mail I gotta paint. If you can see in that rock over there, it looks like there's an hourglass. Uh, I might decide to paint that with some gold trim or something. Yep, on to the next step. Alright, so you can see I did the fur in a uh, sort of lighter brown in that Zandari dust. And I touched up the, the collar with those, those gold rings and uh, some of the skulls needed to be touched up with some white. And I put a lot of my work into this hourglass down here. I mixed the Zandari dust and the yellow to make a sort of like sand color, more of a yellowish sand color, and I painted the gold obviously on the, um, looks like I need to touch up some gray on that rock, on the metal parts of the hourglass. And I used a dark blue mixed with some white, you can see over here, to make the sort of light blue glass color for the hourglass. But yeah. Um, after I touch up that little bit of gray over there, I just, I have the cloak to do, and this guy will be done. Well, I just clear coated this guy to protect the paint job. You can see there's a little purple potion on his belt. I used the blue and the red mixed with some white. Um, I'm not sure if I showed you guys the hourglass yet. But that's been touched up. I, I kept fighting with the gray and the gold, and I figured I'd rather have a little bit of gold on the rock than some of the gray on the, the metal. Feels like naturally the metal would, would spread to the rock a little bit. But yeah. I did the Bretonian colors on the cloak, and he came out really nice. I like him.